Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And today was the Italian Grand Prix, which saw records broken, smashed into pieces, and fed into a wood chipper. Max Verstappen is the first ever Formula One driver to win 10 races in a row. Red Bull, the first constructors to win 15 in a row. It's incredible. When you think that run of 15 wins that Red Bull have, 13 of them have been Max Verstappen. 13 wins in the last 15 races. And honestly, the further you take it back over the last few years, the more incredible the numbers get. So, where do we go from here? I think the next thing we have to watch for is, can Max Verstappen just win all the races to the end of the year? Can Red Bull completely dominate the season, take every race? Which has never been done before either. So, I guess that's where all the excitement is going to lie for Formula 1 in 2023 because the championship is pretty much over. And Sergio Perez actually did a very good job this weekend despite crashing in practice. He got past the Ferraris, got into second. It was a good drive. They were good overtakes. He did a good job. Ferrari, I don't think they can be too disappointed. They know they have not got the best car in the field right now. And I think they'll be fairly happy to have taken third and fourth. At least they got on the podium at Monza. I think that would be a big deal for them. It has been a good year for Ferrari. Not necessarily in Formula 1, but in the World Endurance Championship, they won Le Mans. They're still in the title fight there in their first year. And in Formula 1, they haven't won a race. They haven't really got that many podiums this year. But at least in Italy, they've done a good job. Mercedes were behind them, and I think they'll be a little bit disappointed. They seem to lack pace all weekend, so maybe the tr this track just didn't fit them, but Russell did an okay job to finish fifth. It wasn't anything special. Hamilton, he seemed to struggle a bit. I know they started him on the hard tyres, but he still only made it up to sixth, and it wasn't really anything special from Mercedes. Not by their high standards. They were quite a long way behind the Ferraris. I think Russell started to catch them at the end, but mostly because the Ferraris fought each other. Which I guess you could say is still bad strategy. Ferrari should know better. They should have told Leclerc to hold station. They did almost take each other out three or four times. McLaren had a disappointing weekend as well. They just, again, just didn't seem to have the pace. Aston Martin just didn't seem to have the pace. But at least, well, three of those drivers scored points. Lance Stroll, once again, didn't. Not necessarily his fault. He had a bad weekend in practice. He missed the first practice because Felipe Drogovic drove the car and then he broke down at the start of the second one so he missed a lot of practice time and really he's not on a great run of form and Aston Martin do seem to be dropping back a little bit but again it might just be this track didn't suit them we'll have to see when we go to places like Singapore which I think is up next which I'm not 100% sure other than that, there was a great drive from Alexander Albon. He was in the top six for the majority of this race, and he did only finish seventh, which is a great result for Williams. He scored points once again. Logan Sargent was not too far off the points himself. It was a good weekend for him. Liam Lawson had a fantastic weekend. He was probably quite concerned that his teammate broke down before the race even begun and led to a bit of a delay. But Liam Lawson raced very well. He didn't score points, but considering it was only his second race and his first in normal conditions, he did... A pretty outstanding job. Uh, as for everyone else, there's nothing really to say. It was, once again, the results you kind of just expect. With really only the Williams finishing seventh was the only surprise. Alpine had a bad weekend. Haas were nowhere. Alfa Romeo were nowhere. Uh, it's kind of just how the championship is now. And really, 2023 is kind of just fizzling out. Because it's all about Max Verstappen. And you can go on and on about how great a run it is. And it is great. But it's not great for the sport. Because it's just not very interesting to watch. It's interesting to see him knock these records out of the park. I guess. And that's sort of just something you're holding on to. But really, race by race, it hasn't been a fun season. And this race was one of the better races of 2023. But it was nothing incredible. It was right, right. It's fine, but I've. <laughs> it's still like the third or fourth best Formula One race of 2023, and it's only all right. And that's kind of been the level Formula One has been at for a while. I just don't know why they can't maybe take a look backwards, 
try and find what made Formula One so exciting at various times in its history and try and bring something from the past to the present to make it more interesting, make it worth watching. I'm not sure if it's a technology thing, a rules thing, maybe it's to certain tracks they go to, which I do think the calendar could be better, but obviously it's all about the money, not about excitement. I think if you look at IndyCar and Formula E, regardless of where you think those race series stand, and I think IndyCar is a very, very high standard. Formula E, maybe not so much, but it's still decent. But, I mean, those two series are way more exciting to watch than Formula E. Like IndyCar's at Portland this weekend, and I haven't watched that yet. I'm about to. After I do this, I'm going to sit down and watch the Portland race for the IndyCar. I guarantee it'll be more exciting than Formula 1 was this weekend. And I think Formula 1 could look at IndyCar, see what it does, and maybe see if there's anything they can bring over. Just on a basic level, if they got rid of DRS and replaced it with Push to Pass, I think that would be a lot better. I think most series, if they're going to have something, Push to Pass is an easy one. I think it works in pretty much any context. And I think it'd add a strategic element to Formula 1 as well, better than DRS does, because I don't think DRS really adds anything. Uh, although, to be fair, it didn't really play a big part in this race at Monza, because I guess they reached their top speeds quickly enough, and they're all around the same, but DRS doesn't really matter as much. Like, it did help, but it wasn't like a given that DRS was going to get you past. But I don't, not every racetrack has massive long straights like Monza does, for Temple of Speed. But I think get IndyCar definitely, the standard of racing is high and it's entertaining. I'm sure it's sponsor friendly. They have a great calendar. I know it's all in America, so it doesn't have the worldwide appeal. But even if you're a fan in any part of the world, you can enjoy IndyCar if you like motorsport. Because honestly, it's if it's not the best race series out there right now, it's one of the best. And at the top of my head, I'm struggling to think of another series I enjoy watching quite so much. World Endurance Championship has pushed it this year because that has also been fantastic. And I think that comes back in the next week or two. So I'm looking forward to that. But Formula 1 is really... Like, I watch it every time it's on. And it's not just because I do these videos for this channel. I've watched Formula 1 for a very long time, despite not always enjoying it. And this was true years ago. Like, I remember when... When Yano Trulli won in Monaco, it was kind of cool because Yano Trulli had never won a race before, but that, if you go back, that was a boring race. But I still watched it every week. And I didn't complain about it as much then as I do now. So maybe it's just that I've got older and I've got my rose-tinted glasses on. I'm looking back and oh, Formula 1 was better in the 90s and the early 2000s. Maybe it wasn't, but I guess nostalgia does play its part. But I do think it, there is definite room for improvement. And I don't really have anything else to say about the Italian Grand Prix. It was fine. So I'll keep this one short. Leave your thoughts down below. Did you enjoy the Italian Grand Prix? What do you think of Max Verstappen breaking records? Is there anything else on your mind? Uh, thank you very much for watching and leaving your comments and subscribing. It means a lot. So have a good one.